Before we get started today, I would like to draw attention to a GoFundMe that my friend and the moderator of our Discord channel, Malkaria, is running. She's trying to uh, raise money to visit her brother who is stationed in Japan. She's trying to raise $1,800 by May 16th. I had said April 28th previously, that's just because I don't know how to read. That, so that was my mistake. So she's trying to raise that much money by May 16th, which still isn't very long. And uh, I'll include a link to the GoFundMe in the description. If you have any money at all that you're able to donate, I would be very appreciative if you would consider chipping it in to help my friend go and see her brother who is stationed in Japan. So... Thank you very much for listening and donating any money if you do, and now let's get back to business. Okay, it's Sunday. That means that against my better judgment, it's time to go on Reddit, which is always a very uplifting experience, so let's see what we've got today. Seems like most players don't care about team composition as long, at all, as long as it's 2-2-2. Two, two, two. This is very accurate, and this is how we end up with, peep, with uh, team compositions that are Diva Roadhog or Roadhog Zarya. Very terrible, but people go... It's two tanks, so it's two, two, two. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's just one of those things that people uh, have heard smarter people than them say. Oh, well, two, two, two is the best composition, blah, blah, blah. They've heard something like that. And so they just parrot that back without really knowing why or what that actually means. Yeah, it's just, it's just what they, it's just what they've heard. Worst heroes to nano. I mean, the thing is with nano boost is that there's a couple of heroes who are really good to nano boost, and then there's a couple who are mediocre to nano boost, and then everybody else is kind of tied for worst, honestly. Uh, the absolute worst is uh, other supports, basically. Bridget wouldn't be the absolute worst, but she's still not very good. So if, if you're not one of the best, you're probably one of the worst, because... There's only a few that are actually good to nano boost. I, I think they should just put the speed boost back on nano boost. It would make it so much more consistently useful. Because right now, if you don't have a Genji or a Soldier, why have you even why you even play an Ana? Really, you know, some would say why even play an Ana then. But more than a decade of playing shooters, 500 over hours of Overwatch, just got my silver portrait and still can't aim consistently. What am I doing wrong? I looked at this earlier because there's an overbuff link in there and everything, and honestly, the aim stat isn't even that bad. It's like 44% on Widowmaker and like 38 or something on Soldier. That sounded, I think it was like 40 on Soldier. It wasn't that much lower, really, than um, you would expect it to be, and honestly, for Widow, 44% is probably way higher than your average Widowmaker player. That's what it seems like, anyway. Uh, the, the thing that stood out particularly on Soldier was more just that... Uh, Deaths were very high, and even though eliminations were high, damage was low, so it seemed not so much about aim itself, whereas just dying too much and uh, perhaps not shooting the right targets more than anything else. Uh, stats are that way where you can't, you have to read a little bit more into it, really, because uh, you know, the, the, the accuracy stat itself wasn't that bad. The other stats were more telling to me than the accuracy one. Yeah, advice, advice needed to be the best tracer ever. How do you feel towards the players you kill? What do you mean? I've realized what makes me tilt in this game. It's not lack of communications here. Yeah. Or think, it's when I get into a 1v1 situation and lose, I imagine the other player personally attacking me. I do imagine that, but only because that's what I do. <laughs> I kill someone, I'm like, fucking easy. So, you know, I assume they're doing the same thing, even though in all likelihood, I'm probably just a cunt. So, uh, I, I, uh, I do tend to assume the worst, yes. Proper way to use Orisa's primary fire? I mean, is it better to fire it in short bursts? Not really, no. Like, uh, it, the spread does widen, so there's kind of a point, like, you would, like, stop firing, but, like... Her weapon isn't, like, the same way as soldiers, you know, you kind of just, you you do kind of just, like, shell into an area constantly, you don't really tap fire as Orisa. How to get over a plateau, play a fucking lot, um, watch your, uh, watch your replays or send them to somebody else, you know, ask for advice, uh, be really critical of, uh, your own play and what you think is holding you back, and then try to improve upon it. The, uh, the difficult thing is identifying what that thing you need to improve is. What a good sentence, what a well-structured sentence that was. Um, 
Yeah, the hard part is finding, like, what's holding you back. And then, you know, once you know what's holding you back, then, you know, you've got something to work on. But it's it's finding it that's the issue. So, you know, be really critical of, like, your stats, your gameplay, you know, send videos for other people to look at, watch your own videos, blah, 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 blah. Or, watch, you know, you can watch better players and see what they're doing and see, you know, if they're, you know, what are they doing? Am I not doing that? Try and do that. That kind of thing. It's just like finding the issue, mostly. What advices would you give your newbie self? Just pick the hero you want to play, which was Tracer. Uh, now I'm too in. Now I'm too in. I don't know. Fucking two years later, I've done nothing but play tanks and supports. It's, it's too it's too hard now to learn how to play Tracer. I, I could have got in at the ground floor, but no. No, no, no. I was like, oh, team composition. I should have just... I should have just picked Tracer and gotten good at Tracer. Now it's so hard that it's... Now it's too late. It's so hard that I can't be bothered to put in the effort. <sighs> anyway. Ever find yourself in Widow's line of sight and your abilities are going cool down? In situations like this, just try to move like you're having a seizure. This... That's actually very good advice. Yes. You, you know, it's like it's like how when you're trying to juke some uh, when you're strafe dodging, you don't want to take long uh, lines because those are uh, more predictable. The idea is just to like tap back and forth really rapidly and like crouch on crouch because it's a very sharp, sudden movement which is harder to predict and react to. Tracer Widow Flex. Many of the uh, top tier tracer specialists I've seen in Overwatch League can also play a top tier Widow. However, the playstyles required for either hero seem very different from each other, especially since Tracer relies on close range tracking, Widow relies on long range precision. So, you know, it's just that, like, the tracking is just a way of aiming. Yeah, it's slightly different long range to uh, close range, but, like, tracking still works for Widowmaker as well. Like, the, you know, there's different methods to aiming, so they're not necessarily as far away as you might think. Like, Fundamentally, Tracer and Widow are both about do it, like hitting someone consistently, right? So it's not as... I don't look at that and I'm like, oh, they're completely different. Uh, yeah, one's really close and one's really far away, but they're both still about aiming good, essentially, at the, at the end of the day. What factors make it easy to flex from one to the other, and are there any to... I mean, the thing is that they are very good, right? This is, this, this is the, the main difference between you and the... You and Carpe, SBB, Soon, you know. The main difference between you and them is that you're not a professional player, and they are, right? They've spent fucking a lot of time playing this game, and many of them have experiences with other games prior as well, you know. So, the, this is the difference between you and them. They have played the game a lot, and they are very good at the game, and they were very good at the game they played before, so that carried over. The, these people have played both of those heroes a fucking lot and gotten good at them. You will also need to play both of those heroes a fucking lot to get good at them. So, uh, play both of them a lot, <laughs> you know, the... It's not that the two of them are, like, ad directly adjacent to each other in skill set, right? It's just that they have played a lot. So if you want to be good at both of those heroes, you need to play a lot, because they're both highly mechanical demanding heroes. How do you improve? What a vague question. I have a coach. I read much on Reddit. I'm watching YouTube. I'm playing much, plus I'm in a team. How do you improve yourself? I mean... I don't, I don't really ever, I don't have, like, a set goal in mind for myself, right? I don't think I need to try and do this or that. Like, what I do is every time I die, or every time I see my team get killed next to me, even if I didn't necessarily die, I'll just look back on that and be like, how did that happen? What could I have feasibly done to prevent that? And that's kind of it. Like, I don't watch my own games back or anything like that and i don't sit down like all right this is where my i don't look at like, my own stats in agonizing detail as i'm playing the game i'm just like i fucked up here how could i have avoided that fuck up and then i think about it for a few seconds and i'm like that's what i could have done to avoid that fuck up and then next time i'm in a similar situation i think to myself wait wait do this instead and then the difficult part there is the next time you're in a, si the, a similar situation, you have to be cognizant enough to be like, all right, I need to do this instead of what I did previously. That's the difficult part with that. 
but it's what I do. And, you know, it, it seems to have done all right for me. I don't, like, go super in-depth with it. It's just like, oh, I fucked up. How could I have fucked up? From console to PC, what is easier? I wouldn't know. I was, uh, I'm hiring to the beginning of the season. I, doesn't matter, you know, whatever. Just play, you know, you'll be fine. At the end of the day, if you know how to play the game, that kind of carries over between the two of them. Mechanically, it'll be different, but if you know how to play the game, you know how to play the game. Does SR MMR always take your entire career profile into account, like from all previous seasons? Because I'd be surprised if that was the case. Season 9 was my first, I'm improving, but it annoys me that I'm dragged down by my awful first season. I think it just, I don't think it takes your entire career into profile, uh, profile into account. My understanding is that it looks at your, the uh, game you're in, and it weighs the stats from that game against the average for your SR or MMR. And that's how it calculates your games and losses. I don't think it looks at your previous... If you're When you're getting placed, obviously, it looks at your previous season. And then, you know, it adjusts from there. But I believe from game-by-game -game basis, it's just that game's stats weighed against the averages. I'm not 100% sure. No one really is. I've seen a lot of different theories about it. One theory is that the only stat, the, the only stat that actually matters is sp time you spend being on fire in the game. And then, you know, I don't really believe that, but like, that's one theory as well. Like, no one quite knows how it works yet, because Blizzard doesn't like to tell you these things. How to recreate the old crosshair defaults. I wasn't, I have it on dot. I wouldn't know, like, I have it on dot green because that contrasts the most for me against backgrounds and like i like to have a small crosshair because the bigger crosshairs to me are just unnecessary visual noise so i like to have a very small uh like pinpoint accurate crosshair in 90 minutes of it, okay whatever uh reviewing your vod is genji going to be a very niche pick right now that's Probably not because Dragonblade is still strong, but Genji is about to get a lot harder to play because Bridget's going to make it more difficult and Hanzo is going to make it more difficult as well. Um, so uh, at the same time, though, I, I kind of think that we might see less tanks, so that might make it easier for uh, Genji at the same time. Dragonblade is still really strong, and that is like the majority of what carries Genji. Like, Genji is worse than Dragonblade. Dragonblade is still very good. Even if Genji gets worse, the reason people pick Genji is Dragonblade is fantastic, right? That's, like, the reason to play Genji. So he's going to be harder to play. But Dragonblade is still really good. So he's probably not going to be very niche, but it is going to get harder to play him in the near future. It might... Who knows how it might go in the future, like... If we, you know, because what I kind of expect to happen is Hanzo's going to dominate tanks, so the tanks are going to fall massively out of favor. People are already complaining about tanks, even though I think they're basically fine. People are already complaining about tanks, so I expect that complaining to skyrocket, so then tanks might get buffed, and then 10 more tanks might be in the game, and that might, that would really force Genji out. But right now, I don't think that's, that's not, I don't think that's quite where we're going right now. So he's probably going to be harder to play, but not like very niche. Uh, inconsistent performance. Humans are inconsistent creatures. Oh yeah, I, d oh, I saw this video earlier. This, this was really good. Um, I don't want to just like show somebody else's video uh, without permission, but like if, if you should go and watch th this video from this thread. Well, let me, let me click on the video so we can see what the video is fucking called, right? Uh, Overwatch Hanzo 2. Like watch this. Because, uh, it's terrible. It's very upsetting to watch. Especially as someone who plays tanks. You, sh you should go watch that video. Uh, when to win for as Widow. When, when, you, when there's a lot of people around corners and you're still fighting, right? Like, if they're all out in the open, there's no point using it. Because you can see them all anyway. Um, if you're starting to win the fight, the infrasight... Like, Infrasight is something that's better used usually before a fight has really kicked off, because the whole point of Infrasight is that it's uh, very easy to pick people off with it. So, uh, picking people off is most impactful right at the start of a fight. So, yeah, sort of, 
early earlier rather than later and when the enemy team is actually hiding from you but you also have to be in a position where you can actually capitalize off of it right because if you use it but then you can't get into a position where you can actually like use it to pick somebody off it didn't do anything so earlier rather than later but when you're actually in a position to be able to feasibly pick somebody off with it i just got this wonderful guy are there any tips uh tricks character guides on youtube so i could work wow <laughs> you know um I don't remember very many of the YouTube uh, guides offhand because I, I didn't watch. I've not watched them for a very long time. Uh, one amongst many is very good. He's a lot smarter than me. Uh, that's the only one I can think of offhand. If you want to play far, Valky is the best guy to go to. Um, and that's the only ones I can remember offhand right now. I don't like to watch other people's content that much because I'm afraid that, like, psychologically it's going to impact me and I'm going to end up ripping them off, like, without even intending to do so. So I don't like to watch many other people. The only one I really do watch is One Amongst Many because his style is so drastically different to mine that the I would be very aware if I was ripping him off. Anyway, uh, collection reproducible mail locations. It's a YouTube video, never mind. Hanzo rework. Am I the only one who thinks that Hanzo's lunge is just a shittier Genji double jump with a four second cooldown and a little horizontal movement? I mean, yeah, it's a shittier double jump. The thing, I, the thing I also, a thing I also saw was a comparison of Ge uh, Hanzo doing like some wall climbing stuff and uh, with live compared to the PTR, and it's a lot harder to uh, do juking over wall, like low wall stuff with it now. Basically, is what it looked like, as you know. It's definitely not as good as double jump, but like when your weakness is people diving you, being able to just get away from them really quickly is a big deal. And uh, Hanzo's not interested in having a double jump for the same reason Genji is. Genji's trying to get to high ground so that he can fight those people, and you know, a double jump helps with that. And he's also using the double jump because it makes him more unpredictable in the air and it helps him do all this dodging stuff, blah, 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 blah. blah. Hanzo, his primary reason for having lunge is he doesn't like people being right on top of him. So having a double jump that thrusts you in a direction is a bigger deal when you want to be away from people, right? Genji wants to be closer to people. Hanzo wants to be away from people, typically. Though with Storm Arrow, he doesn't care so much anyway. But that would be the theory behind giving him uh, a lunge. And yeah, it makes sense for a sniper. Their weakness is being on top, people being on top of them. So obviously getting away from them is a bigger deal. Uh, tri gold Tracer VOD, no. When are triple tank, quad tranq, or tri triple DPS actually viable? Here's the thing. People are bad. As long as your team isn't, team comp isn't something ludicrous, like fucking Symmetra, Torbjorn, May, Lucio, Zenyatta, fucking Orisa, right? As long as it's not something ludicrous like that, your team comp is probably fine right uh like triple quad tank i see those things work all the time right like I, people complain about them constantly i see those tank those team compositions work quite frequently like it's not as big a deal as people think it is except for when you get into the higher ranks because and i do mean the higher ranks like diamond you know plat kind of starts to matter there but like diamond and then past that is where team comp really starts to matter because that's when people know how to play their heroes right in like lower ranks than that people do not typically know how to play their hero properly yet and since they don't know how to play their hero properly team compositions do not function as they are meant to function so team comp doesn't matter until people can consistently play he their heroes well, which is high SRs. So like people worry about this kind of thing too frequently. I've seen fucking I see fucking five DPS and one healer work like all the fucking time. Like it doesn't doesn't matter that much. How to climb without your main? Too long didn't read. How do you climb and try to carry a team without your main or as a support? I mean, like, you should always be able to play a few heroes, right? Like, if you come into he into competitive and you can only play one hero, if you can't pick that hero for one reason or another, that's going to be really fucking hard. So you should be able to play one or two heroes in every category. And 
the answer is that you are good at more than one hero, right? Like, that's how you climb without your main. You are competent at heroes asides your main. Yeah, you're really good at that hero. Yeah, because that's why, that's why it's your main. But you're good at other heroes still. I'm really good at Reinhardt and at Moira, but I can still competently play every other tank except Zarya. Every other support except Lucio. <laughs> Ironically, despite him being what most people would consider the easiest support, or second easiest, and I can play like a bunch of DPS, not fantastically, but I can play a bunch of DPS. Like, so, I I can play those heroes, I try to pick my main, but I can play other heroes, so that's kind of the idea, just like, be good at more than one hero. Okay, you're really good at that one, but like, be good at other heroes as well. Please judge, nope. Uh, does anyone else think Bridget is fine? In what way? There's a lot of sentiment going around that she is Imba Broken OP. A lot of people keep trying to tell me she's trash. I don't know. I keep seeing such conflicting reports. But I don't think that's the case. I, I, I think she's probably going to be fine. Like, I think she, she doesn't seem drastically overpowered or drastically weak to me. But I mean, at the same time, she still isn't in the game. So we'll find out one day, I suppose. Oh my god, this has been the most agonizing wait for a hero release in history. <sighs> Unsure of when to push in as Winston versus when to stay back with supports. You should stay back with your supports if they're getting killed by somebody. If they are not getting killed by somebody, you can push in. If your team are getting killed, fall back and help them. If there's a, like if they're getting killed by Genji, go sit with them until Genji's not an issue anymore. Then push in, right? That's that's the whole thing. They don't need you to sit with them unless there's something actively giving them trouble. So if nothing is currently giving them trouble, you can go and do other things. If it looks like it's about to give them trouble, like Genji's not here right now, but you know he's somewhere in the vicinity of the back line, all right, you should wait around because he's about to become an issue. But if your supports are not about to be threatened or not currently being threatened, you can just go start pushing in again. Because if they don't need your help, why are you sitting with them, right? Like, they only need you to sit with them because they need your help. Once they no longer need it, go off. Go do your own thing. What happens when the season change? What do you mean? Guns. Uh, with the plaza, I was really enjoying it. Support main, trying to learn as much as I can. What happens when the season resets next week? Does it just SR reset? SR resets and you do 10 placement matches. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really change much of anything. Uh, tips to climb up and rank in season 10. Oh god, it's a YouTube video. How do you play Winston without a D.Va? It's very su like, it's a very surprising sentiment to have right there. At least I can go... There's no D.Va, so how should I play him? I mean, the whole thing with Winston is that you're just trying to, like, you're contesting high ground. That's your highest uh, priority as Winston, to, unless you're trying to counter somebody specifically, like, like Genji. Um, if you're, like, you just, you, you find the people you're really good at doing, killing. This is the thing with Winston, he's got a very, he's very good at what he does, but what he does is very narrowly defined, right? Like, he's very good at killing certain heroes, and then he's mediocre at best at killing everything else. So you really want to focus on just doing, and this is true of all heroes, technically, but like, I mean, technically, this is true of all heroes. You want to do the focus on doing the thing that you're really good at doing as your hero, right? And then doing everything else after that. So Winston, you're really good at contesting high ground, so that's your number one priority. You're really good at killing Genji, so that's up there as well. And then after that, you're just trying to get to the people that you can kill and pressure them without dying yourself. That's a very important part. If you're pressuring them but you die, all pressure is immediately relieved. So you're trying to safely get to the people you're good at killing, harassing them, trying to kill them, and, you know, while you're doing all this disruption nonsense, the rest of your team is able to capitalize off of that because you're, you jumping on the Mercy back there dem demands a response or the Mercy is going to die. And then because multiple people are dealing with you, that makes it easier for your team to push in. Now, you, do, you still have to not die, right? You st still don't die because then it doesn't matter. If you were pressuring the shit out of that mercy, if you die, you're not doing that anymore. And then also you're trying to kill people who are out of position. You know, it's just true of all heroes as well. And you're trying to contest high ground and remove the things that you are good at removing as Winston. And that doesn't really change on, based on which tank you're with. It can be easier or harder depending on who your ta other tank is. But you're still basically trying to do the exact same thing. Uh, help. Uh, what are the best heroes to play in competitive? I mean... The, I mean, 
I was talking with Lane Comp, and I know to know which heroes I should play, preferably from every category and how. All right, from every cat that makes it easier. All right, so like the best DPS heroes are uh, currently. <laughs> This might change in the near future, because, you know, season's about to change, a bunch of new heroes are about to come in, Hanzo's rework's coming, who knows what's about to happen. Currently, the best heroes to play are, for off I'll just say DPS. The best DPS heroes to play are Genji, Tracer, Soldier, um... Genji, Tra uh, Junkrat. I like the most widely useful DPS, and, uh... But the the whole, like, Overwatch definitely has a tier list. The difference between a top tier and a low tier hero to me is how useful they are in a variety of situations and if whether or not they have something very strong about them, right? Like, Soldier is good in very many situations and TAC Visor is very strong. Uh, Soldier himself slots into basically any team composition and is fine, right? Same with Genji, he can be played in most team compositions, and Dragonblade is very strong. Tracer can be played in basically any situation, is very strong. And then Junkrat is also, he also just kind of right now slots right in, and he's just consistently good, and the tire is very strong. People are bad, so they kill themselves on you all the time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, tanks, the best ones currently, as far as I'm concerned, don't, don't you fucking dare, are, um, Reinhardt, Zarya, and Orisa. Those are the three best tanks to me right now. Um, because they're actually tanks, right? Orisa and uh, Reinhardt are actual tanks that actually, like, protect their team, right? None of the other tanks really do that. Well, they do. They do create space for their team, but they do so in an aggressive fashion. Reinhardt and Orisa are the only two, like, tank tanks in the game, really. Diva was close, but not so much after she got uh, Defense Matrix nerfed. And Zarya is just always good. She has one of the best ultimates in the entire game. She's a very high damage presence. She's one of those heroes that, like, once she gets charged, she demands you pay attention to her or she's going to kill your entire team. And then she has the be one of the best ults in the entire game. And then supports, best heroes are uh, Zenyatta and Moira. Zenyatta, Discord's always really strong, and uh, Transcendence denies so very many of the scary ultimates. Graviton doesn't work anymore, Genji, Dragonblade doesn't work anymore, Attack Visor doesn't work anymore, all the really, even like Earth Shatter, he can deny that as well. Uh, he just, he denies so many of the strongest ults in the game, Discord's really strong, he himself does a lot of damage. And Moira is just the strongest main healer right now, right? Like, she has competition of Anna and Mercy. Anna is probably one of the worst supports right now. Well, she is one of the worst supports right now. And Mercy is just very jack-of-all-trades, master of none. She's never the worst decision, but she's also never the best decision, right? Like, Moira Zenyatta are, like, as far as I'm concerned, like, unquestionably the two best supports right now. And uh, we'll see what happens after that. But, like, also at the same time, just play whoever the fuck you want to play. Like, if you want to play Torbjorn, play Torbjorn. I don't give a shit, right? Like, as long as you can play Torbjorn, as long as you are trying to win, I don't give a shit who you play at the end of the day. Because that's the only thing that matters in competitive, really, is as long as you are actively trying to win, whatever. Pick whoever you want. I don't care. Uh, let's see. What made you decide to main your main? Well... Uh, basically, I started playing when Reinhardt was unquestionably one of the best heroes in the entire game. And, uh, not a lot of people wanted to play Reinhardt because he's quite boring to play, especially compared to people like Tracer and Genji and Hansa and Widowmaker. So not many people played Reinhardt, so I would play Reinhardt because he was, uh, close to man- he was, well, he was basically mandatory. But not many people wanted to play him, so I played Reinhardt a lot, and I got really good at Reinhardt, and then that was just what I did. And he just ended up becoming my main. And, uh, I really like playing Moira, so she also basically, uh, went up there as well. I played, like, nothing but Moira for, like, two entire seasons, so, like, Moira and, uh, Reinhardt. And now Bridget's coming out, she's, like, a more fun Reinhardt. Easy money. Reaper is literally unstoppable in plat. Is that so? Please do elaborate. <laughs> but it's, it's one of my uh, one of my accounts is in plat, and I don't feel like that's the case. I thought the only unstoppable heroes were Moira. The I thought before Reaper's buff, I thought that the only unstoppable heroes were Moira and Reaper. Moira is less unstoppable than Reaper. 
Mafara main my sub. No, get out of my face. This is, you, you've lost all credibility at this point if you're playing Farah and you think the Reaper is unstoppable. How to counter HP stacking. Pretty much what it says. I've encountered defensive comps like include Torb... Okay, yeah, Torb Sim, Bridget, and they seem fairly unstoppable. Basically, like, the way that team comp operates is that they're very tight-knit together, and as soon as one person dies, they all die. So, and typically, you know, they're sitting behind a bunch of barriers, so the best thing you can do is pick uh, someone like Junkrat or Farah and just, like, bomb the shit out of them, right? They're very good at uh, disrupting static comps like that because they have projectile weapons so they can peek corners over and over again. They're very long range, so they can just shell them from outside of those heroes' effective ranges completely. And uh, and then they have big ultimates that they can just throw in, and those ultimates just destroy comps that are, like, right next to each other because they're big, damaging AoE explosions. And also, Hanzo is currently good against that kind of comp as well because you just build up Dragon Strike, send it through them, and then if they are all... Uh, if they are just, like, sat defending a location, suddenly they have to scatter because of the um, Dragon Strike. And if you got a Zarya as well, obviously that combos. Hanzo's about to be really strong, so that's going to be even more so the case. Because, oh fuck, is Storm Arrow going to be scary? And then the other reason will still be true, so there's that. Uh, I've dropped over 500 SR recently, why is this happening? I mean, are you just on like a wicked losing streak? In which case, it happens, and I don't have mercy. And I, I don't have any sympathy. I was, re I was reading the name Mercy, and I was like, I don't have mercy. I don't have that either, but uh, I don't have sympathy if it's just like a losing streak. They happen. And I would do very well with mostly gold damage. Uh, I've even do it with one of the friends who was a diamond player who was on his lower account. Da, da, da. I don't believe I'm in, in any low hell, but I mean, you've not said anything factual help, really. Like, just, you know, just get good losing streaks. They happen. Whatever. It'll stop happening. Need help getting out of bronze. Here's some footage. My overbuff. Look at this. I don't really want to look at somebody's uh, account. This isn't even your overbuff. <laughs> this is an image of your top heroes, and it just says your skill. And uh, what I'm noticing is that two of the top heroes are Symmetra and Torbjorn, and, you know, that's, you know, this isn't even your overbuff. This is not helpful. This is not in any way helpful. Just go away. So this might be controversial. In the vast majority of games, I honestly believe no one person can carry. No, this is, yes, you have to be drastically better than the game that you're in to be able to carry the game, like legitimately hard carry the game. Now, someone on the team will also always be doing better than everybody else, right? Not all, okay, not always, but usually one person on the team is going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. But it is very hard to like legitimately hard carry a game. What are some reliable counters to Doomfist, McCree, Reaper, Roadhog? Big boy, very weak to CC. Reaper is just good against big boys. Bridget also probably will be. Is there any difference between NA West and East servers? Their location? What? 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 A lot of people say East Coast servers are can't. Are they on the West Coast? That might be the issue. Look. So you guys think Bridget is just a little OP? I'm a support man of the great C. However, she does this, in my opinion, a little too well. This is a continual, this is a consistent opinion that I've seen, which, like, I think people are, like, reading way too much into this when she isn't even in the game yet. I've seen people saying things like, Reinhardt's gonna be useless because they think about this one situation where, like, they're blocking a diva ult that's blocked, they're blocking a diva ult that's gonna hit their entire team, and then Bridget comes out of nowhere and just bashes them. That's that's not going to be what happens. Like, there are a lot of heroes that can do there. There are other heroes that can do that, but that's not a consistent issue, right? Like, people are looking at her crowd control like this has never been seen before. Oh my goodness, Bridget can just like stop Reinhardt from blocking something. Oh no, that can already happen, right? Like, and her CC isn't even that long, <laughs> really. Like. McCree can do that, but nobody's out there having a, a fit over McCree flashbanging someone and then 
whole team getting killed because the shield went down. But people are really afraid of that with Bridget for some reason. Like, this is, and the reason that most people get killed because their Reinhardt didn't block it is just because their Reinhardt's fucking bad and doesn't know how to block or position, so like, or manage their shield. Like, people are, this is the most common thing I see people complaining about, the fact that shield bash blo like interrupts, like, Reinhardt blocking things. This is a very common concern I see people having. I'm like, there are a lot of heroes that can do that. You can even just push Reinhardt out of the way if you have a movement ability. But we don't worry about that. But for some reason, Bridget is the one that everybody's complaining about, despite her shield bash not even going that far and not even being that long of a crowd control effect. is very perplexing to me. The thing that's really strong about Bridget is just like, oh, you're killing that person. Now you're not killing that person, right? Like, I don't understand this fixation people have with like Bridget being in the game is somehow going to make Reinhardt useless because she has crowd control. I'm like, this is other people do that. Sombra wrecks Reinhardt, and yet we Reinhardt's still fine, right? Like, is whatever. Anyway, yes, she's going to make it harder for flankers, though. You know, that's kind of the thing she's good at. She's good at bodyguarding people. Help searching for crosshairs. Pick a small one. Visual noise. Get rid of it. Overwatch with a mental illness. Let's not get into this. I don't think that uh, YouTube is the place to discuss that kind of topic, oddly enough. Uh, well, can someone explain this? I was playing some Uprising Legendary and saw... What? Oh, 294 hours? What about it? How is this possible? He really fucking likes Lucio. You know, he just really likes Lucio. Uh, why is 6v6 competitive lockout elimination top 500 spray not animated? Good question. Who cares? But, you know, <laughs> I've never even seen one of the animated sprays. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, and I've seen them, but I haven't, like, seen them in game. Like, this is a good question, but at the same time, who cares? But, you know, how to stall 2CP like pros? Be a pro player. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a startling suggestion, isn't it? How do pros do Because they know how to play the game. Because <laughs> they know how to play the game. And all of their teammates know how to play the game. And they're coordinating. Anyway. Best tanks to climb with. Um, Diva's really good. Zari is really good. Um... Roadhog can be really good if you know how to play Roadhog. I mean, you have to be good at Roadhog. Everybody knows how to play Roadhog, but you have to be good at Roadhog because he's mechanically intense. I think Reinhardt's perfectly fine, but uh, a lot of people will tell you that's not true. Um, trust me, I have like a 72% win ratio with Reinhardt. Reinhardt is definitely fine, despite what some people will tell you. Uh, it's just people are bad and over-exaggerate issues. On the internet? I know! Startlingly enough, people on the internet are known to blow things out of proportion sometimes. Uh, so, Arissa, really good. Reinhardt, Zarya, Diva, like even Winston, like they're all fine. The best is probably Zarya, but you have to also be good at Zarya. So, what is the best way to counter an all damage and one healer comp? Pick a lot of tanks. The thing is with that comp is that they have no presence. So if they don't kill people a lot, they're not they generate no presence because a lot of DPS doesn't means they have no front line. So they have to kill people to win the game. That's why they have they have all damage heat dealers. That they have to kill people to win the game. There's no other option. So if you are all hard to kill, I just pick if you know, pick fucking four tanks and a Moira, right? Like or Moira Zenyatta and four tanks, or like three tanks, one DPS suddenly you're a lot harder to kill and if they can't kill you they won't win so a lot of tanks um a solution to elo how well we've been going nearly 40 minutes we'll do one more i don't feel like this has been a great day on reddit unheard of we'll do one more is there a way to enable my mouse to leave the game window when searching for a game without having to alt tab uh uh, 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 full screen borderless. That's the that's the one. For some reason, that was really hard to think of. Yeah, 
locks it to the game when you're actually like using it but if your cursor is on the screen you can just leave uh help a silver winston versus the meta the current meta i've been having so much trouble with mercy pocketing reaper and may this is a distinctly silver problem if that's like consistently what you're running into you're gonna have to play a different hero because like that is too obstructive for uh winston to realistically deal with like you are gonna have to play a different hero diva isn't any better diva is still countered by those people like you are gonna need uh to play like orissa reinhardt zarya right like, you're gonna have to go to a non-dive tank because that is too hard to dive into basically how do I get a gold team to beat a Bastion? I mean, the issue is, like, you have to remember any time that, like, some kind of Bastion cheese comp is happening is that multiple people are involved in that cheese, right? It's not just Bastion sitting there. That Im other elements are required. They're using, if you can believe it, this ancient and lost art form known as teamwork. I know. And the only way you really beat teamwork is with teamwork. Because you as one person will always have trouble beating more than one person. <laughs> so if your team doesn't want to work together to help deal with the Bastion problem, there's nothing you can do except try and just like pick Junkrat or Hanzo or Farah and try to deal with it. At the end of the day... Teamwork is only bitten, beaten by teamwork. So if your team aren't helping you, you're probably shit out of luck. Is there a way to listen to music while playing Overwatch without missing out on important information? I literally can't hear the game when I'm playing. Because I listen to music while I'm playing, but I listen to music loud. Because what is the point of listening to music if it won't cause you hearing problems later in life, right? And I listen to a lot of loud music also, so, you know, it's a stacking effect. I can't even hear the game. And I got to and I got into Diamond and then up to Masters, right? Like, you'll be fine. You know, you don't, don't worry about it too much. I've been stuck in silver for a long time and I can't seem to climb out of it. Sometimes I win, but I mainly lost streaks. Get good. Ah, uh, it's too... It's not the kind of question one can just help with without need it, without more uh, information. Is Brigitte supposed to feel like a ballerina? But she should be on the front line between your team and the enemy. Her melee attacks... Reactive field requires her to face the allies. You can't face both ways if you're not a backline or a diver. So what happens... So what actually happens is that I have to rotate myself all the time in a fight, frequently exposing my vulnerable back to the enemy and feeling disorientated. This doesn't sound correct. <laughs> I'll tell you more when she's actually in the game. Because I'm going to play her a lot when she's in the game. She isn't in the game yet. More advanced tips for Moira. I have a pubic, but I want to focus on not dying, but actually. Mm. To help me go. Alright, so... The thing is with Moira, is that a lot of playing her is just about, like, getting small efficiencies out of your kit. Like, she... Her, her thing is that she does a lot of healing, and her ult charges very quickly. So... But she doesn't... She doesn't have, like, a... She doesn't have, like, a massive impact thing about her, right? Like, her biggest impact thing is that she has a lot of healing, but, like, you can still definitely kill someone through healing, right? Like, you know, fucking nano-boosted Genji can kill you through Transcendence, right? Like, it's... So, a lot of playing more is about getting these small increases of efficiency out of your kit. Like, when you're using your ult, you want to be hitting people on both of your team, on both teams, on both of your teams, on both teams. So, you have to rotate around the fight and try to position in a way where you can realistically hit both teams. Most Moiras go off to the side and then only hit, like, their team and, or, or only the enemy team. Whereas if you go back, it's a 30 meter ability, you can send it through both teams if you just go back rather than to the side. And, like, rotating around the fight to make sure you maintain an angle where you can hit both teams. It's about knowing, like, alright, I'm getting low on resource and a fight's about to start, so I need to stop healing people right now and let the other healer deal with it while I recharge some of my resource. Ah, uh, fuck, I'm out of resource, so now I need to use my healing orb 
So, and while the healing orb is bouncing around, I don't need to also be healing, and I'm low on resource right now, so I'll take this time the healing orb is here to go and generate some extra resource. Uh, nothing, just throw damage orbs out there, because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we all know how it be. It's just... Her, she, she's the kind of hero that puts up really big numbers, but she does so over an extended period of time, right? Like, at the end of the game, you can easily have gold damage and gold healing, but that requires being efficient at all points through, always doing something. You don't want to ever be standing around just doing nothing. You can always usually be healing somebody or doing damage to somebody. And then when you're healing somebody, don't just hold left-click over them, you know? Like, you want to hold left-click over them if they're gonna die, or if they need to recover a lot of health, but if they if it's just like chip damage, just like sprinkle it on them. Anytime things are in a relatively neutral state, every now and then just like give a spray over your team to keep the regen on them. That'll heal up uh, any chip damage they take and you don't have to really focus on it because the regen stays on them for a long time. And then every few seconds while things are neutral, just once over them. And then mid team fight, you know, I'm doing damage. Let me just put the regen on everybody real quick still anyway. Uh, I'm about to use my ult now, so I'm going to start backing up and try to get into a good position. You've just got to try and be efficient and just always be doing something active. And like, she supports her this way in general, where it's hard to carry the game. So a lot of it is being as efficient with your resources as possible. Moira is like that, like amped up, right? Like, even though that's Lucio's thing. She's Always be doing something, you know. Try and be really efficient. Reduce buffering and alt tab is an issue. Bridget is OP. Here's why. Oh my god. She's kind of... She's the Lich King Druid of Overwatch. I have no reference for that. Which DPS hero works well with Moira? <laughs> There's no... She doesn't... She's not one of those heroes that has, like, hardcore synergy with things other than, like, tanks, basically. Uh, she would theoretically work well with Anna because the healing grenade... Uh, the biotic grenade plus the healing would be a fucking lot of healing. But in practice, she's just better with Zenyatta because Transcendence is really strong. And if you've got a main healer, you can pick Zenyatta. Uh, two main healers in general is, like, not very good. Like, there's no... She doesn't... She's not one of those heroes that has, like, a hardcore synergy thing, really. She's just kind of blanketly pretty good always. If it's a high ground map or your team is very divey, she can have trouble keeping up, but, you know. Most important role for team success, tanks. If you have no tanks, if, if you have no tanks or your tank doesn't know how to play the game, it's really evident. And if your tank doesn't know how to play the game, you never make progress, right? We've all played the game on Hanamura where Reinhardt just sits by the choke point and is too afraid to walk forward. So we just spend four minutes sitting at the choke point, not doing anything. If your tank doesn't know how to play the game you or you don't have a tank, you're probably going to lose the game, especially if their tanks do know how to play the game. Flanking Zen, more popular on higher ranks. A lot of flanking Zen. Not really. You've had a very different experience than me. Help an anime now? Oh no. I played two masters as a tank main, support main, and hit scan DPS main. I'm a bronze Genji. It's a sad story. Uh, I turned off all communication and it, and it made the game fun again. Oh, I got linked to a threat to a comment in here. Uh, let me see if I can still find it. I got linked to a, a comment in here a while ago that basically mirrored exactly what I thought about it. And it's like, basically, here's the gist, right? Here's the thing. Yeah, communication sucks. Here's what you got to remember, right? People tell me, oh, communication can win you games. It can. But here's the thing. You need... The first off, right, if one person in the team is an asshole or toxic, all communication shuts down. So because and you're just mute the person. All five people will need to mute that toxic person. That's not going to happen. As long as there's one toxic person in there, all communication breaks down because they dominate that space. Unfortunately, if everybody muted him, he wouldn't even be toxic to begin with. So that's not really a solution. Not all of them are going to mute him. So to get good communication, there has to be not a single toxic person in there, because otherwise they'll dominate the chat. Then also, though, 
People need to know how to communicate. Communication is also a skill. And here's the thing, it's a skill very few people have. Because a lot of people lack the confidence to actually communicate properly. And then the ones that do have the confidence typically don't actually know how to communicate properly, right? The, so not only does there have to be no toxic people in the Overwatch community, but enough people need to be in the chat that know how to communicate and are actually going to communicate because it might be they might know how to communicate but they personally are too shy or whatever to actually speak so they might not know they might know how to communicate but not want to communicate and then the ones that want to communicate have to know how to communicate there's a lot of things that have to actually go well here for communication to actually matter no toxic people all people know how to communicate all people are willing to communicate it just it doesn't have the biggest hurdle is getting no toxic people right because one toxic person does shut the whole thing down and here's the thing as well if you start winning people don't need to communicate because you're already winning so no communication happens that's when people start just fucking around in chat right and if you start losing people don't like to lose that's where they start just blaming people and the toxicity starts to come out there's a lot of things that have to go well for communication to actually work right like and you say oh well if you're re if you come into the chat and you are really good at community if you are fucking mr charismatic then you'll make the whole thing work out there's like three people in the entire world that are that kind of person we aren't all fucking winston churchill right like this is not it's not gonna happen right like yeah communication can be important but in a game like overwatch there are there are very few games you'll get where no one is toxic and enough people are confident and know how to communicate there are not many games where that's gonna that that venn diagram we're looking for a real tiny slither in there it's not gonna happen very often yeah communication can be important with randoms it doesn't happen if you're a six-man pre-made Fair enough, now communication's important, especially since the system will try to put you against another five-man or a six-man, right? That's when communication is important. With randoms, it's very hard to actually get meaningful communication. And I would estimate that with, like, just, ran just you solo queuing, right? Just a solo queuing person, probably, like, you know, like, 10% of games are actually going to have, like, really good communication. And the rest of the time, they're going to be, at best, just completely pointless, right? Like, no, no good or bad will come out of it. In, and... It's, Okay, those experiences are cool, like when it does go well, but the Overcommerge community is a fucking festering shit pile, right? Like, it is a fucking septic tank of trash, right? That doesn't happen very often. You'll find a lot of assholes compared to anything else. Yeah, communication can be important, but like, fuck is our community fucked. Anyway. How can I make the push from silver to gold? Get good. Uh, this is, again, just such a broad question. People on Overwatch are big meanies, but they could have a point. Well, it could be wrong. Okay, whatever. Yeah, this is too much. Main tank tips. Um, actually tank for your team and don't uh, remember that you're playing a tank. So your number one priority is blocking damage for your team. You, you, you know, the enemy team wants to be firing at your team, so you make them fire at you or your barrier instead. Um, positioning a game sense that comes. Just like focus on protecting people rather than doing damage, because that is what your role is at the end of the day. And which maps is May better than Junkrat? I don't think there's a single map May is better than Junkrat on. Because the thing is, May, like, Junkrat's a really good hero, and May is a pretty bad hero. So I don't think there's a single map. What hero should I learn to be more well-rounded? Soldier, uh, Arissa, Zarya, uh, Zenyatta, Moira. They're the most just consistently useful heroes. Maybe include Reaper in the DPS. 
or uh, Genji. They're like just like the most well-rounded, like fit in and can smooth out most team composition heroes, basically. That's a 50-minute video right there. What a good job we've done, boys. All right, so thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship posts with us and I hope you found the video helpful.